Hi everyone, it's me and Toby. Say hi, Toby. Hello. So some of you have said that you miss seeing my dogs in my videos because for the past few videos, I haven't had one of my pets in the background. And that's because my two dogs, Rosie and Toby, they like to come up here with me, Toby especially, and he lays on my bed, but he usually lays in a place and goes to sleep and he's not up moving around and rolling around because he does sleep a lot. He's 13 and he's been around the block a few times. So he gets tired, right, Toby? He's like a an old man. So he's my little Maltese. He's only like four pounds. He's so teeny tiny and cute. And I just love him. He, I got him for my anniversary um, in 2011. So does that make him 13, 12 going on 13? Oh, he's so happy now. And now he's gonna like move around. Let's see if you can see him. Toby, what are you doing? What are you doing, Toby? Yeah, such a good boy. Toby's good. All right, <laughs> enough of that. But some of you have missed seeing my pets in my videos. And that is mainly because Rosie is like a, a real dog. Like she does all kinds of dog things. Like she chases squirrels, she chases birds. Any sound she hears, she wants to bark and alert us. And she's our little shelter dog and she's four and she's black. I think you've seen her, but she's downstairs doing dog things. She doesn't like to come up here and roll around on my rug and things like that. But I think that what some of you are missing is what I'm missing too. And that's Candy, my little West Highland Terrier. She was 15 and she died a couple of months ago. And um, I'm finally at the place where I'm not crying every day. <laughs> you know, I'm not crying as much. I can talk about her without crying. So that's really good. Um, and I'll tell you more about that in another video because I was really grieving. I was really going through grief and I guess I still am. But um, I'm finally at a place where I'm thinking about like, oh, if I get another dog, what kind of dog would I get? And, you know, things like that. Like I'd love to rescue another dog, but um, I don't know, we have a lot of dogs in our house. There's Toby, he's being playful now. Toby, what are you doing? What a cutie pie. <laughs> I just love him. Anyways, um, so that's why you haven't been seeing the dogs. And my cats, like all cats, they just do their own thing. They don't they don't like to like make an appearance whenever I want them to. They do it whenever they want to. And I have two cats, but we're going down to one because my orange cat Piper is actually my daughter Paulina's cat. And she lives in a house on campus where she goes to college and she's going to be taking Piper in a couple of weeks to live with her in her house on campus. She has roommates and there's always people around. And so Piper is gonna go with Paulina. So I'll have two dogs and one cat. We did for a while have three dogs and two cats. So it was really busy and I loved it. My husband always jokes that I'm like Snow White. I talk to all the animals. I talk to the birds and I talk to the dogs and I talk to the cats and I talk to the horses. <laughs> and I just love talking to animals and being around animals. So anyways, that's just a little bit about um, why you haven't been seeing my, my dogs and my videos. And um, so today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my summer foundations that I have in rotation. And in the summer months where I live, I really like long wearing. That's like first and foremost. And then I like um, a little bit of um, a skin-like or soft matte finish. I don't tend to gravitate toward a luminous or radiant finish because I have an oily T-zone. My skin is combination oily, so it's sort of balanced around the edges and I still get a little oily in the T-zone even though I'm 54 years old. When I was a teenager, my skin was super oily. I'm not even joking. I used to if you ever want to hear a video that's not really sharing any products with you necessarily, but just telling you about my skin growing up, I would love to do that. If you're interested in just hearing me gab, I'll tell you about that. But um, my skin is still a little bit oily. And I don't really mind if it doesn't have an SPF in my foundation because I'm, in the summer months, I always wear a high SPF beneath my foundation. And then I always reapply a powder formula 
once or twice during the day. So if I'm outside, you know, I'll be reapplying foundation, but I don't want to, I mean, reapplying um, sunblock, but I don't want to mess up or disturb the integrity of my makeup. So I use a powder formula. Um, so that's how I reapply my, um, my sunblock. And the way that I apply my foundations is with a brush like this one. And this one is from Sephora. And it's just the Sephora 70 brush, but Sephora does change the numbers every now and then. Um, and it'll be the same brush, but it's called the Pro Foundation 70. And it looks like this. And it's got really like soft, but packed fibers. I just washed it, but it's kind of stained here. I washed it and really tried to get that out and I couldn't, it's clean right now. Um, but it really buffs the foundation in and gives me a really beautiful coverage. Um, I also like this Artiste Oval. This is either the seven or eight. Same kind of soft fiber. Some other really affordable brushes that I love are this from Real Techniques. And I got this in a pack of three. I don't know if they still sell them that way, but this is a beautiful foundation brush. And it's every bit as nice as the other two. I think I like this one the very most actually, because I, I just does such a good job of buffing in the foundation love this one and then this one also came with two others this one's really nice for concealer um but anyways the brushes that i don't like to use this one is from luxie and um it's just it looks like a good foundation brush but the fibers are very you can see it's so soft see that and like the real techniques one it doesn't i hope you could see it just it doesn't it's not as soft See, this is really soft. And the reason I don't want this one for foundation is because it will leave streaking. It's just too soft and it kind of drags the foundation around. I have a lot of brushes like this um, from like Real Techniques and other brands and they're just too soft. And then if you're at Target and you want some good foundation brushes, these are from Sonia Kashuk and they're ac actually just like the other ones, like this, the fibers. They look like they could be from like the same company. This is Sonia Kashuk as well. I have a lot of foundation brushes. I share them with my daughters, but I just have a lot of makeup brushes, period. No one needs that many. But anyways, those are the brushes I like to use, or I like to use a sponge. And this is from Real Techniques, and these are what I've been buying lately because I like I like that they're flat on one end, and I like that they're pointed on the other. So this part is really good for concealer or kind of covering any like squiggly veins around my nose. And then I like the flat side, you know, for pouncing around. So that's how I like to apply all my foundations. I never use my fingers. I just don't like to, it's no particular reason. Um, and the other thing I want to tell you, um, first and foremost, is make sure you always have a good color match because I have tried foundations in the past and they weren't the exactly right color. And if it's not the right color, sometimes it can even be like almost a little too taupey or gray and it could be a beautiful foundation but it's going to make you look ill because the color isn't just right if it's too rosy um it can almost make me look like i i'm too red like like my skin is naturally ruddy or if it's got a little bit of too much yellow in it um, it just won't look good on my skin. So getting a really good match is really important because it can be the determining factor in whether or not you love or hate a foundation. So I've learned that from trial and error. <laughs> so if you're gonna spend money on a high-end foundation, get color matched. Go look at the color in person and I don't know, get a sample of it and check it in different light and things like that before you spend your hard-earned money on the wrong color. But the good thing about high-end foundations is you can always bring them back even after you've used them to Ulta or Sephora and get the right color. So it is kind of mistake-proof in that respect, but I don't like going back to the store and exchanging things. So I'm sure the rest of you don't either. So those are a few tips just to start out. And I'm just gonna tell you about my climate. I live in the Chicagoland area in the state of Illinois, and we have four very distinct 
seasons. So the winter is very bitter and cold and snowy, and we have our heat on, we have our fireplaces lit, the air has zero humidity, you know, we get we electric shock. So show. in the, wi the winter months, the foundations I wear are very, very different from the foundations I wear in the summer months. For example, some favorites in the winter that I use I don't like at all in the summer. And one is the Beautiful Skin from Charlotte Tilbury. It's very hydrating, very creamy and moisturizing and glowy. And in the winter, it's beautiful. But in the summer, it makes me look like an oily, greasy mess. And it feels heavy on my skin from the humidity in the air. And it's just no good. Because in the summer, where I live, it gets to be super hot. It can get up into the 90s. And it can feel even hotter because the humidity gets really, really high here too. So it's just the opposite of our winters. So we have the extremes here. So it makes sense that makeup changes according to the seasons as well. A favorite. Oh my gosh, guys, I bought this a couple times now and it's so good. And I do try to pull this off sometimes in the summer, but again, it's a little too moisturizing for me. And it's the Lancome Skin Feels Good. It does have a little SPF in it. It's like a good tinted moisturizer with just more coverage. So it's really pretty. And then another one would be like the It Bye Bye foundation or the CC cream in the original formula. I can't use these in the summer months. Just again, for the same reason, I can't use the other ones. And so I put those away and then I pull them back out when the weather starts to change in the fall time. And before I start sharing with you my foundations, I just want to tell you briefly how I prep my skin. So what I do in the morning is wash off my skincare from the night before with a gentle cleanser, and then I spray a skin pH balancing toner, and then I apply a serum, and lately it's been Genifique from Lancome or the Caudalie Vino Perfect. I like both of these a lot for underneath my foundation because they soak in completely and don't feel like anything on my skin. And then I go over top that with my sunblock and I love La Roche-Posay sunblocks. I've tried several and I really like the ones I've tried so far. Right now I'm using the Tularane Double Repair Face Moisturizer with a UV protection of 50. And I apply this all over my face, neck and chest. And then I use something different like on my body as I go out for the day. But this is what's generally underneath my makeup. And I tend not to use a primer unless I'm using like um, like something kind of glowy. Like for example, this MAC Natural Radiance Base Lumiere. It's kind of like the strobe cream or anything kind of glowy that goes beneath your makeup and I just apply it to like the tops of my cheeks in certain areas. I don't apply it all over my face. So that's what I do on most days. Okay, so now I'm just gonna jump in with the foundations that I have in rotation for the summer. And these are the ones that I'm going to be rotating either like week by week or just depending on what my skin is doing that day or the look I'm trying to achieve. So the first one is from Lancome and it is the newly reformulated Tint Idol Foundation. So nothing has changed in terms of the packaging. It's still a nice alabaster glass bottle with a pretty Lancome symbol lid and it's got the pump. And what I really like about this foundation is that it's incredibly lightweight, but it is definitely a medium buildable to full coverage foundation. It smooths out your skin and blurs pores. It's incredibly long wearing. It says it gives you up to 24 hours of wear. I don't know anyone who wears their foundation for 24 hours straight. Like maybe when I was in college and we were like out going to the clubs and things like that, but even then it wasn't 24 hours. So um, yeah, the longest I would have this on is probably 12 hours, but it looks beautiful for the whole 12 hours. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the new reformulation and I don't want to forget anything, so I'm going to read from some notes that I wrote. But it has hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, and prebiotics in it. It has ultramarine blue or chromium oxide green pigments or peach pigments, depending on the shade that you get for your particular skin tone. And so 
basically the coverage that it gives isn't from the heaviness of the foundation, it's from the pigments. So it's so incredibly pigmented that it gives you this beautiful coverage in the most lightweight formula. So when you pump it out, it is slightly runny. It will start to run, but it's not so watery that it's like a serum foundation. And when you blend it in, it just blends in like nothing, you know, like it's just some lotion or something like that. And it just leaves your skin glowy and beautiful. It does have sort of like a satin finish and it's transfer and sweat proof. And like I said, it's a medium coverage that you can easily build up to a full coverage without it ever looking cakey. And it's great for all skin types, even sensitive skin. And I do have one qualm with this foundation. The price has increased by $10. I remember when this foundation was $48 and now it's $57, so it's $9 more. And before, when it would go on sale, you would get it for like in the $30 price range. Well, now when it goes on sale, you get it like for as much as it used to be at the full price. I feel like Lancome Foundation has reached like really high end price price point like Dior or um, Armani or Chanel, those brands that are like $60 foundations. And I tend not to buy those foundations because I don't want to spend that much on one foundation. If it was the only foundation that I wore, then it would justify that. But um, I don't like that it's increased so much in price, especially since all the more high-end or luxury foundations that I enjoy, they all are remaining like in the $40 range. And then when you, they go on sale, you can get them in the $30 range. So I don't like that, but I do absolutely love the formula. I love the packaging. I love everything about it. And it is a beautiful foundation. So other than the price, Everything is great about this foundation, in my opinion. So since Lancome has raised its price by $9, a foundation that is very similar, in my opinion, to the newly reformulated Tint Idol is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Foundation, the Airbrush Flawless Foundation. And this is a foundation that whenever I wear it in videos, a lot of times someone will ask me what foundation I have. It makes me want to use this foundation every day. And it's got a beautiful alabaster glass, this pretty lid in sort of like a rose gold shade, a beautiful pump, and it does sort of like pump out exactly like the Tint Eye Doll and blend in like the Tint Eye Doll. And it does just leave this beautiful, flawless finish on my skin. I do believe that it is perfectly titled Airbrush Flawless finish. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what it says on the website. So this does not say what pigments are in it like it does on the Lancome, but it does say that it is infused with her magic serum and elixir. It's a popular Charlotte Tilbury serum that I've never tried before. I would really like to have any of you tried it. And if you have, can you tell us a little bit about it down in the comment section? I'd love to know whether you love it or if it's just okay. But anyways, this gives you a medium to full coverage. It's buildable, so that's great. Um, it does give you this sort of flawless finish that has a little bit of radiance to it as well. So whatever is in the formula is sort of reflective, even though it doesn't feel greasy or, or overly moisturizing, but it does have ingredients in it that moisturize your skin, like hyaluronic acid. And there's also some... Um, peptides in the formula as well, which is really good. Um, and then she has something trademarked called Air Cool, which leaves your skin kind of feeling cool, but it's sweat proof and humidity proof. And it is a beautiful foundation. And even though I love the new Lancome, if it were still the same price, it would be a tie between the two of these. But because this one is nearly $10 cheaper and you can get it on sale, this is the one I would get. Okay, the next foundation that I absolutely love and I've used this foundation for so, so long and it is the Studio Fix Fluid from MAC and it does have an SPF of 15 
And MAC has recently done a reformulation and a color range expansion for the Studio Fix Fluid. So they added a lot more neutral tones or neutral rosy tones or neutral golden tones. And there are a lot of colors to choose from. And something important to remember is that if you have a MAC foundation and you're looking at the color range when you're in the store and it says something like, NC20. What that means is N for neutral, C you would think cool, right? No, not for MAC. The C means golden or yellow. And then the number, the level of your color, light to deep, um, would be the number. But if it says NW20, for example, that would be mean neutral rosy, peachy. So it's just the opposite of what you would think. So a good way to remember that is the N means not. So if you see NW20, think in your brain, not warm 20. That means it's cool. And if you see NC20 or whatever number you are, that means not cool. It will be warm. So it's just the opposite of what you would think. So N instead of neutral means not, and the W or the C means the color that it is not. It's the opposite. I don't know why MAC has their colors like that, but they always have, and that's the only way that I was able to remember it when I first started using their foundations. So they did do an expansion in the neutral color range, which is wonderful because I ended up finding a color that was even better for me than what I used to wear. And so I do have two of them here and they look like this. Now with the MAC foundation, you do have to purchase the pump separately, but Macy's, Belk, Dillard's, the MAC website has sales fairly frequently and you can get it for five or six dollars. And if you go to the cosmetics company store, you can get it for three to five dollars. So um, always wait for a sale to get your pump. And then once you have your pump, you can use it over and over again. But you do have to purchase the pump for the first time separately. And when you don't have the pump, it will come in a bottle like this and it just has a screw off lid. And this is fine too. I just kind of turn it over and go like that. And I lived a very long time not with a pump, but it sure is handy to have a pump. And that's what it looks like. And I have to find a place that doesn't have foundation. And it just blends out really nicely and it leaves my skin with like a soft matte finish. And this shade right here is N4. So it's a combination of rosy and golden tones. The pigments are sort of blended and it just gives you sort of like a truly neutral shade. And then this one, I have an N4.5. When they started expanding the color range, I found a color that was better for me. And this is the one I use the most and that's why the pump is in this one. So you just take off the little top. It does get slightly messy, but it's only because I don't really clean it up as much as I should. Like when I wash my makeup brushes, I should also just take a tissue and wipe it off. And it does wipe off very nicely. So you can keep your pump nice and clean. And so this one is N4.5. And again, it's really kind of creamy and blendable. And what I really like about the Studio Fix Fluid is that it always gives me a perfect, reliable application. It's a medium coverage and it's really pretty in photos and it's also very, very long wearing. And I think that this also claims to give you about 24 hours of wear. All of these are long wearing. I have to have long wearing because my skin does get oily and it can kind of make my foundation break up if I don't. So that's why I like long wearing. So the Studio Fix Fluid is beautiful. And then another one that I really, really love and I have for years, this one is a little bit harder to find and I hope MAC isn't discontinuing it, but you can get it at, at department stores and things like that. I couldn't find it on the MAC website, but I love this every summer. And this is the MAC Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. And you're gonna think that this is gonna be like derma blend, like it's gonna be thick or something like that, or like, like um, costume makeup, but it's not. It's super lightweight. And in this one, I have my shade in NW20. So not warm, cool, 
20 and this is a perfect color so even though i have mac foundations i wear different colors and different formulas so this one is really really nice and this one is even silkier than the first one and it goes on like a dream it just blends out and it's waterproof it will not budge so if you're going boating or if you're going to be in the water or if it's a rainy day or if you're going to a funeral and you might be crying or a wedding and you might be crying um this is definitely a really good go-to and it's the one i'm wearing today it's very skin like it's not a matte finish and it's not a radiant finish it just looks like like my skin but it covers my imperfections and blurs my pores this is one of my very very favorite foundations and even though it's waterproof it's also nourishing and it really is when I wear this foundation for like a week or 10 days straight I feel like my skin just starts to look more balanced like it's not quite as splotchy or red it helps my skin kind of balance itself like there's something in it but I don't know what that just helps my skin look good overall really good foundation I think I'm going to buy a backup of this one just in case it I don't hope Mac isn't discontinuing it I'm going to do some research but I love this foundation Okay, I have two more foundations that are in my rotation and they are going to be more radiant foundations, but they're still long wearing like for 12 to 16 hours, but they're really beautiful. For me, I have to powder these foundations and all the other ones I don't have to set with a setting powder. So these I have to powder to set them and that that's like the main difference and they are more glowy. But the first one is the NARS radiant Longwear foundation this isn't the new foundation from nars i have not tried that one yet i'm not sure that that one would work for me because i do have an oily t-zone but this one does work for me and it is a buildable to full medium to full coverage like all the rest and it is super blendable it's imperceptible on your skin it does have a glass jar a pump and then a nice lid and um it kind of has the same sort of formula as the Lancome and the Charlotte Tilbury. And the difference is, is that this is a glowy foundation. So it's going to leave my skin with a luminosity and reflect light more than the other ones. The other ones do have like more of a satin finish, but they're not as reflective and glowy. And so I really love this one for that. It's such a pretty foundation. And the next one is from Anastasia, and this is the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. And it's like the same thing, glass bottle, pump, and this one is more luminous than the other one. Okay, I had to clean off my hand to show you the last one. And this is the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. Same thing, glass bottle, pump, removable lid. And this one is such a pretty foundation. It's very luminous, more so than the NARS. And this one I can't wear for super long days, like 12 to 16 hours. This foundation I'll wear on a day when I'm only gonna have my foundation on for like eight hours, maybe 10. <laughs> That's still a really long time. It's still pretty long wearing, but it's very luminous and it's so pretty. But when my oil breaks through, I'll have to powder it again midday. So I'll have to set this after applying it and then like midday I'll have to use like the Clinique or MAC blot powder to kind of blot and keep it from breaking up around my t-zone where I do tend to get oily in the summer months if I'm wearing this one in the winter then it's fine because the air is so dry and I don't get quite so oily but it's a beautiful foundation and that's what that looks like it's slightly more runny than the NARS and it just blends in so, so pretty. And it leaves my skin with like this really peachy, luminous glow. I don't know if you can tell on camera, um, but an important thing is that even though these are radiant and long wearing, they do dry down. They don't feel tacky on my skin, but I do powder them to prevent them from kind of breaking up in the T-zone. But they're beautiful and they're definitely going to be in my rotation. These just won't be every single day because if it's 90 degrees with a really high percentage of humidity in the air, these won't be my choice because I will already be glowing with my most matte foundation. So those are my 
high-end foundations that I'll have in rotation this summer. I do like makeup. I like alternating the makeup I wear. So that's why I have so many, but there's a place for them in my routine. And there are days where I'll just grab the same one over and over and over and over. And then I'll just decide to change things up because I get a little bit bored. Or I don't know if it's just in my mind or if it's real, but it starts to like just not look as good. And then I need to change things up for a while. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your favorite foundation in the summer is. And I hope you have a blessed and beautiful day. I'll see you next time.